Welcome back to LearnPiezo.org. Uh, in this part of the ultrasonic uh, cleaner uh, do-it-yourself series, the first project, part C, we're going to be determining the impulse resonance frequency. I think last lecture I mentioned I was going to do the capacitance, but I thought I would show everyone a different way of measuring uh, the resonance frequency. So let's go to the experimental diagram. And the first thing you'll notice in comparison to the last lecture, part B, you're not going to notice any alligator clips coming in and supplying power to the system. There's actually no power going in uh, to the system. Uh, so therefore, uh, the function generator B and C, you can either disconnect it from the oscilloscope or you can completely, uh, you know, or you can disconnect it from the circuit because we won't be using it. So you should just turn the signal off. So now I'll describe the circuit. Basically, we have our signal generator, right? Well, no, we're not even going to use it. We have our crystal. Let's draw it like that. We have a resistor. In this case, I'm going to be using a 10 ohm resistor. It's important to use a low value resistor for this experiment. And then I'm just going to connect it there. And I'm going to have the voltage probe over this. Let me just draw it in a different color. Uh, the voltage probe, probably this point, is right there. And we'll just draw the other part in green, which will be right here. And this is the black. So we're measuring the voltage over the resistor. Or in fact, because of the way the twisty ties are, uh, are hooked up, we're actually measuring over the terminals. Basically, what we're doing here, or what we're going to do in this experiment, is we're going to get a pencil. Or actually, I'm using a highlighter. Or the, the harder the object, the better it is. But I'm going to tap it uh, sort of loosely. I'm going to hold the pencil by the, the highlighter by the edge. So this is like a highlighter, you know, and that's like the clip. I'm going to hold, um, use my fingers and hold it by the edge here. And I'm going to sort of flick it and hit the top of this uh, transducer. And that's going to set it to, into vibrating. So it's going to start vibrating once you hit it. Uh, just this because how, how, whenever you hit anything, you lock, I'm, hitting this table. I'm hitting this table. What's that sound? That sound is the vibration going through the whole uh, table, and then it's uh, you know it, then it's exciting the air around it. And then I'm, we're hearing that, and we're listening to that. In this case, we're just worried about the transducer itself vibrating. We're not really interested in measuring sound in air. So when we set this, uh, you know, as a piezo electric, when it vibrates, it's stress and strain. It creates a voltage. But then we have put a resistor here. So because the resistor value is not large and the smaller the resistor value is, the closer you would get to the short circuit resonance frequency of the transducer, which is effectively the, the resonance frequency of the transducer when you're hooked up to an external source. Now you could also do the experiment removing this resistor. And I think we, depending on uh, how this video uh, goes, we may also do that to show you what happens when you remove that resistor but actually i'm putting i'm putting this resistor this is a small enough value that you'll get a decent uh value you value for what the resonance frequency is and we're going to determine that in kilohertz so there are going to be a couple of ways now you're going to find me doing this so i'm just going to hit this you're going to hear this hitting sound i'm going to flick this highlighter it's a orange highlighter what brand it's a bic bright liner fluorescent highlighter non-toxic okay so we're just going to basically flick that and it's going to set this transducer vibrating as natural frequency whenever you excite a system with an impulse force. So if you were to say um, this is time and this is the amplitude of force, it's effectively going to be an impulse force. But it's not going to be a true impulse force because this is a sort of soft highlighter. The harder material you impulse, you, you use to impulse, send the impulse force to the transducer, the better frequency um, the higher frequency content you can generate, but I found through experiments that this, this highlighter is going to be enough to generate that resonance frequency pretty clearly. So, so uh, effectively, this is the force, impulse force we're going to be applying. So, and of course, I'm going to show you the practical. So, I have this set up. Uh, I have this voltage probe set uh, for one times. And again, all of these products are going to be listed on my website. And if you do click on those links, uh, you're going to access 
Amazon, which uh, partially will give some of those proceedings back to the website manager and, the, and for perhaps future content, buying more things and improving the website. Yep. So let's go on to the PicoScope. And I as you saw the PicoScope program. Um, there it is. Let's double click that. All right. The great thing about the PicoScope uh, is that you get really good software for uh, for even a lower grade of their device. All of their devices use the same software, which is sort of cool because some of their products can I think run even ten thousand um, dollars. A really advanced uh, uh, product, but this we want the lowest grade uh, of uh, oscilloscope, which is actually more than enough for what we will be doing. So here we see the opening screen again, and I'm just going to go over this, all the steps, so nobody gets lost. I know what we're going to do, we're just going to hide this top part, because we don't need that. We can do this. Okay, so first thing we need to do, we need to get signal. This is what, I, what I'm always telling you. So you have to change the signal to uh, re repeat. And I have my highlighter I just picked up. And I'm just going to tap it. So we see this is generating some signal. Now watch what happens when I unhook. When I unhook it, so you get like an unstable signal. When I unhook that twisty tie, therefore making the system open circuit, you know, sort of removing the resistor. So let me just increase that. Uh, because there's like thermal noise which is going on and it's just triggering and it's just not a happy camper when you do that. So that's that. So it's, it's re on repeat. Now I'm hitting it. This also does the same thing. So we also get a large, lot larger voltage because we're not shorting it over this resistor. But um, this resistor doesn't in fact help us to get a nice clean signal which is accurate. It did have to correctly. Okay. So is that a zero? Uh, the zero tr trigger again. And let's. Uh, this is actually this default setting is actually quite nice. I'm going to increase the, the amount of samples. Why not? Because we can. Uh, I also want to increase the amount of data we're going to get, and we're going to. I'm going to move this trigger back to the beginning so we can get more of data we're interested in. This is 50 millivolts, right? What you want to do, you want to get a nice, clean. When you when you think you have a good, uh, like that was good, but now we now that we're trying to get a good reading, we don't want to do auto. So what we just did, we set up the system so we're getting data we like. Now we have to get only one set of data so the system doesn't trigger itself by accident and we lose all of that. So I'm just smacking that hand in the day. Okay, so we got to keep pressing. Whenever we collect a new data set and I'm going to actually increase this to a little bit higher so we can get make sure it only collect data when it gets a good value so let's work with this I'm just going to highlight that okay so I'm going to count 10 cycles and I'm going to use no, so uh, so this is the start, and then ten cycles, and I'm gonna calculate the time. I'm gonna calculate the period and the frequency. So we're actually gonna start. I want to use this thing as pointer tool. So we're well, this about there. So one point zero eight microseconds. And we're going to go 10 cycles. One cycle, two, three, four, five. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 247.5. Keep in mind this is a microsecond, so it equals this minus that 
multiplied by 10 to the well I'll just divide everything by 10 cycles multiply by 10 10 uh, to the minus 6 because that's uh so that's the period because that's uh you know microsecond so okay and that's the frequency 405.81 so now we just calculated the resonance frequency now let me show you a different way to do it instead of counting cycles so let's just go over to this frequency content so it directly tells us the frequency content I'm just going to show you how to set it up and I'm going to run through it just like you might so I'm going to hit it again and I think uh, the data we we're a little bit too picky about how much voltage we generate let's just do a little more and we don't want to do this we want to do auto we don't we want to do this 50 okay so it's still running so we go here and we just click that are we not getting any data there we got another one I think I, I set this, this standard is too stringent um, that's a good in a sense okay stop oh, oops. okay that's too low actually so we need a little bit higher got our uh, basically our resonance frequency from looking at the peaks now let's try going here and this is the spectrum mode which we will directly see the amplitude of each frequency when we uh, uh, excite the transducer with an external impulse force now what we have here is a scale from 0 to 10 megahertz and a other scale on the logarithmic uh, unit decimal so if we hit it uh, we see that I'm very low in the frequency spectrum around 40 kilohertz as you would imagine we have a large resonance we have other small uh, smaller activity going on here a lot of noise as well so we need to first change our frequency limited 98 and let's try it again you see that trigger down there that's the level I'm using I gotta impinge it a couple of times to get it to run but there we got it there so that's 40 kilohertz um, there's just that other uh, bit of info right here as well about 40.9 40.6 I believe this was the one uh, we're looking for let's try that again here so here this is this resonance frequency is about 40.9 um, what we're going to do is we're going to change this from logarithmic to linear We're going to lower the uh, required trigger. And we are not getting the signal. Let me just try that other pencil I had over here. Sometimes got better. Okay, got it. Uh, so the trigger stopped. Well, where is the signal? Well, the signal is actually quite small regards to how we are able to view it so we do have to go pretty far down let me just start over so there you see right there now you actually sort of get what the resonance frequency would be very close to 40 kilohertz um, the because we we're looking at a logarithmic uh, unit in the previous so previous so we sort of got a misrepresentation of what not misrepresentation, a different representation, but however we wanted to really get an idea what was the dominant resonance frequency and this very well points it out. Uh, here we have it at about 40.15, which is very similar to what we had before. So that is the way to find the resonance frequency 
And again, we found that the other way is 40.6, uh, which would be very similar to that one. Um, these methods aren't perfect, especially in pinging uh, the transducer um, to get its resonance frequency out of it. And you can imagine it has a bit of a spread in the data potential. So that that so this actually then excited that one more. So there are different resonance frequencies existing. So we're, we're pulsing it. We're exciting all of them. Not all of the resonance resonances will be excited when we are pinpointing a certain frequency. And depending on the way the piezo electrons are set up, they will only excite certain modes. However, they may be receptive to other modes, uh, which they won't effectively excite, but they can sense, uh, as in this case. Um, we're having large um, frequencies also here. So, with that, uh, thanks for watching. In this, for the case of this transducer, we do have a bit of a ambiguity, ambiguity uh, about what is the resonance from this method. Um, could it be forty point nine? Could it be forty point six? But uh, for other transducers, it's going to be a lot more clear. Um, so I mentioned that what, what happens when we take off that resistor. So right now I'm going to disconnect the resistor. It was originally there. I disconnected. So, oh, okay. so I disconnected the resistor. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like. Well, we have to increase the trigger. And we're going to actually have to use a very large voltage. 2 is even good for this. So I disconnected the resistor. So basically now we have a complete open circuit and we get this so the frequency landscape definitely changes because now we're measuring the open circuit resonance uh, now it's around 40.43.22 so those are two ways to find the resonance frequencies unfortunately the spectrum method for this specific transducer didn't show as clear of a resonance it was sort of confusing there was like a 40.6 and a 40.01 or something so that was a little bit confusing um, but uh, it did help us to understand another tool to quickly identify some of the key parameters and get a feel for our transducer. Thanks for watching.